The main character of the story is Yuna, a girl who is very passionate about virtual reality games, and she comes to them to change her boring life. Once, when logging into the game, Yuna is given one of the item chests here by the system based on her playing time in the past year, and she wins a bear suit that increases stats based on the user's level. Continuing into the game, Yuna panics when she sees that her account has been downgraded to level 1, and she can't exit the game anymore. Soon after, Yuna receives a letter from the god, and she learns that she has been transported to another world. Thanks to the tremendous power of the bear suit, Yuna is able to defeat a pack of wolves and rescue a little girl named Fina. To make it possible for Yuna to sell the wolves, Fina helps Yuna dismantle them, and then she takes Yuna to a city called Cremonia. They sell the flesh and skin of wolves to a man named Jens. Then Fina takes Yuna on a tour of this city, and everyone is surprised to see Yuna's bizarre bear outfit. In order to earn money to support herself, Yuna goes to the Adventurer's Guild in the city to register as a member. Suddenly, a man named Deborain walks over and mocks her outfit, so she knocks him down instantly, leaving the surrounding adventurers in shock. After Fina's father died, Jens was the one who took care of Fina and her sister. Jens wants to ask Yuna to hire Fina for dismantling monsters. Yuna happily agrees because she also couldn't do it on her own anyway. However, the number of monsters she hunted was so large that Fina alone could not dismantle them. So the Adventurers Guild forbade Yuna from hunting for a while, for fear that the monsters would become extinct. Deborain's party wants to take a request that destroys goblins, but they don't have enough members because Deborain is injured after being beaten by Yuna. Because of that, the receptionist asks Yuna to help their party. Yuna reluctantly agrees, she and Lorena, who is a member of Deborain's party, will take the request to exterminate goblins. Upon reaching the goblins' lair, Yuna shoots fire into the cave and then blocks the entrance with earth magic. She plans to suffocate them. However, the Goblin King is still alive after the attack, so Yuna has to fight seriously to destroy it. After Yuna defeated the Goblin King, people in the city started calling her Bloody Bear. Yuna is already at the level that she can summon a black bear to aid herself in battle, and soon she discovers that she can summon another white bear as well. But the white bear is sulking because she didn't summon it first. Thanks to the two bears, the number of monsters they hunted increased, so Yuna decided to build a house so that Fina could have a more spacious place to work. A frightened boy goes to the Adventurer's Guild to ask everyone to save his village. But no adventurers dare accept this quest because taking down a black snake is too dangerous for them. The boy is thinking that there is no hope of saving his village, but Yuna comes and accepts the boy's request. Seeing the silly bear suit Yuna is wearing, the boy doesn't think that Yuna can defeat the snake. But after being persuaded by Yuna, the boy accepted to take Yuna to his village. Upon reaching the village, Yuna faces the black snake alone, and her magic can't penetrate its hard scales. However, Yuna uses earth magic to prevent the snake from closing its mouth. Next, she shoots fire magic straight into its mouth to kill it from the inside. The people of the village are overjoyed when they hear that Yuna has defeated the black snake, and they hold a party to celebrate the event. The next morning, Yuna is treated to a fried egg by the village chief, and she learns that eggs are expensive because of farming techniques, and are not common in this world. Soon after that, Yuna leaves the village to return to the city, and all the adventurers are surprised to learn that she has defeated a giant black snake. Fina is injured when she cuts the hard skin of the black snake, so Yuna uses healing magic to heal her wound. The next day, the guild master informs Yuna that the lord of this town wants to meet her. But Yuna declines his invitation because she thinks that lords and nobles are bad guys. However, Yuna still has to accept his invitation in the end because she doesn't want to be kicked out of the city. Turns out, the lord's daughter, Noir, is a big fan of Yuna, so the lord invites Yuna to play with her. While Noir is playing with the two bears, the lord asks Yuna for a favor, which is to help him find a birthday present for the king. Yuna gives him the Goblin King's sword, which makes him very happy because the Goblin King's sword is an extremely rare item. After leaving the Lord's house, Yuna sees Fina standing in front of her house in the rain. It turns out that Fina's mother is very sick. Fina takes Yuna to her home to heal her mother, but Yuna's healing magic cannot cure her. After thinking for a while, Yuna realizes that her illness needs to be treated at the source, so she uses magic to remove the bad effects to completely remove the disease from her body. After receiving treatment, Fina's mother recovered her health. While walking around town, Yuna sees some children from the orphanage begging for food in the street. She brings them some food. After going to the orphanage to inquire, she learns that the source of support for the orphanage was cut off by the Lord not long ago. The children have to go to the street to beg for food from the people. After hearing that, Yuna is so angry at the Lord's actions, she just wants to punch him to death. But the teacher stops her because they don't want to touch the Lord. 
Yuna remembers that chicken eggs in this city are a rare commodity, so she decides to help the orphanage by setting up a chicken farm. The children will be able to work here so they can earn their own living by selling eggs to earn money to maintain the orphanage. Yuna invites Fina's mother to be the manager of this farm. Then, the Lord comes to ask Yuna why she has refused to sell eggs to his family. Yuna says that he cut off the monthly allowance for the orphanage. As soon as the Lord returns home, he discovers that one of his subordinates has been corrupting the orphanage's pension, so he orders the arrest of his family. Then, the Lord goes to the orphanage to apologize to everyone for his mismanagement, and promises that he will continue to send them subsidies. So Yuna is happy and forgives him. Fina's mother accepts Jens's proposal, but the next day, they argue with each other over a trivial matter during breakfast. Fina is afraid that their feelings will be broken, so she wants to find a snowflake to save their feelings. Yuna, Fina, and Fina's sister, Shuri, go to the mountain together in search of snowflakes, but they can't find a single flower here. They are depressed when Shuri finds a bird trapped on the ground, and after saving that bird, it leaves them a beautiful feather. Fina and Shuri decide to use the feather as a gift for Jens and their mother. However, when they got back home, Jens and their mother made up. But when they received the feather, Jens realized that it was similar to the one that their father used to wear, making him and Fina's mother very emotional. Jens promises that he will be a good father to them. After solving Fina's family matter, Yuna uses eggs to make puddings, which are loved by residents in the city. Yuna and Fina receive a request to escort Noir to the royal capital to attend the king's birthday. As they rest on the road, Noir looks forward to camping around the fire with everyone. But unexpectedly, Yuna takes out a house from her glove. She cooks the two children a delicious meal of minced meat. The next day, Yuna accidentally saves Lord Gran and his niece, Massey, who is Noir's friend. Everyone then goes to the royal capital together. When they arrive, Noir's mother runs out to pick them up. Noir's mother appears here because she is working in the king's castle, and Noir's older sister, Shia, is also studying at a school in the capital. Shia doesn't believe that a kid like Yuna is an adventurer, so Shia challenges Yuna to a duel. Then Shia is easily defeated by Yuna. Although Shia is quite sad after being defeated, she quickly regains her spirits thanks to Yuna's delicious pudding. The next day, Yuna found out that there were potatoes and cheese on the market, so she bought the ingredients to make hamburgers. Noticing Yuna's culinary talent, everyone suggests that she open a restaurant to serve these dishes, but Yuna has no plans to do that for now. During a small outdoor party with everyone, Yuna tries to make a pizza for them. Right after eating, Noir's mother takes Yuna to the king's castle for a visit. Yuna accidentally meets little princess Flora here. Meanwhile, Noir, Missé, and Fina secretly start a lady bear fan club. A man named Gulzum attacks the royal castle. He informs the king that he will command an army of monsters to attack the capital for revenge. He leaves after he has finished speaking. The king reveals that Gulzam was once a royal magician. But he used prisoners to experiment with dark magic, so the king banished him from the kingdom. Everyone in the capital has spread a rumor that there are monsters attacking passersby in the northern forest. Noir realizes that the Lord is going through the forest to attend the king's birthday, so she asks Yuna to pick up her father. On the way to pick up the Lord, Yuna realizes that there are a large number of monsters lurking in the forest, so she takes care of them with her own hands. Her entire battle has been seen by a royal mage, and she reports to the king about Yuna. Gulzum is so enraged because his monster army was defeated by a girl. He orders a giant earthworm to attack Yuna, but she casts fire magic to burn it, and then the Lord comes and orders the arrest of Gulsum. The king learned of Yuna's feat through the royal mage's report, so he summons Yuna to the royal castle to declare her merits to the people, but she refuses because she doesn't like popularity. Yuna's pudding is put on the menu for the king's birthday party, and it seems he and his guests really enjoy it. Yuna and Fina decide to buy some bread before going back to the town but the bakery they used to frequent has closed down due to default. In order to help the mother and daughter who own the bakery, Yuna decides to open a restaurant in town to sell her food, and she will hire them to work for a high salary. As soon as she returns to the town, Yuna takes care of all the paperwork for the merchant guild, and she also asks Fina's mother to be the manager of her restaurant. When they arrive in Cremonia City, the mother and daughter are surprised to see Yuna's huge restaurant, and they learn that this place was once the residence of a noble. Yuna also takes the children from the orphanage to work at the restaurant, and the children's work uniforms are bare outfits. On the opening day, Yuna's restaurant has to serve such a large number of customers that Yuna has to roll up her sleeves and work in the kitchen. At the end of the day, they celebrate a successful opening day with puddings. Yuna realizes that there isn't any seafood in Cremonia City, so she thinks that there must be no port town around here. 
However, when she goes to the guild to inquire, she learns that right next to the city of Cremonia there is also a port town called Malella. But the two towns don't often exchange goods with each other because a very high snowy mountain range in the middle separates Malella and Cremonia. Yuna decides to cross the mountains to the town of Malella to eat seafood, and she accidentally saves a couple from fainting. According to the couple's words, they were on their way to Cremonia City to buy food because now the town of Malella is facing a shortage of food after a monster called Kraken appeared at the seaport. It makes it impossible for boats to go out to fish. Not only that, but a band of bandits is also blocking all roads leading from Malella to other towns, so they can't import food from other towns either. Yuna takes them back to the town of Malella, and she realizes that the state of the place is very unstable. The merchant guild here still has some food in reserve, and the merchant guild president sells that food at an exorbitant price. But since there is nothing to eat, people have no choice but to buy his food. In order to support the people here, Yuna goes to the town's adventurer guild. She meets guild master Atla and offers to provide enough wolf meat for the town. The amount of wolf meat that Yuna has provided is given to everyone by the adventurer's guild for free. And thanks to that, the famine is temporarily solved. That night two men break into Yuna's room to assassinate her, but they are quickly defeated. Upon learning that they are members of the bandit gang, Yuna forces them to take her to their lair. She easily wipes out the bandits. After hearing that the bandits have been caught, and the roads are cleared, the merchant guild president suddenly becomes panicky and takes all his possessions to escape, but he is stopped by Atla. It turns out that the president took advantage of the town's difficult situation when the Kraken appeared to bribe the bandits to block the way in and out of town. He wants to get rich by selling high-priced food. After dealing with the bandits, Yuna spent many days still unable to think of a way to approach Kraken because it was too far away. Her two bears couldn't even swim out there. After eating hot pot at the house of the couple she saved, Yuna suddenly comes up with a way to defeat the giant squid. Yuna uses the carcass of a giant earthworm to lure the Kraken. Once Karen fully enters the trap, Yuna uses earth magic to imprison it, then repeatedly casts fire magic to attack it. As soon as Kraken is completely destroyed, Yuna also faints from exhaustion. After defeating Kraken, life in the town of Malella returns to normal, and Yuna finally enjoys her first seafood dishes since coming to this world. To make it easier for the two towns to trade with each other, Yuna uses magic to dig a tunnel through the snowy mountain, and the leaders of the two towns also met to discuss long-term business. Then Yuna decides to take the Fina sisters to Malella for fun. Along the way, they see a bear statue placed outside the tunnel to commemorate Yuna's merits. As they pass through the tunnel, the sisters see the sea for the first time in their lives, and Yuna takes them on a tour of this beautiful city. 